Good morning guys and welcome back to World of Tanks, it's Jaeger 262 and today I'm going to be doing the rest of the review for the King Tiger C or really the only review on it before it was a preview of all the stats today I'm just going to play a couple of games I wanted to apologize that it took a little bit longer to get this video to you guys simply because I'm having so much fun playing the AMX 1357 and the Stretzvang S1 now I'm not a fan of the AMX 13 yet but it is a crazy XP earner, and the Sturb S1 is a crazy credit earner, and they're both very, very fun. However, I did play the King Tiger a little bit, and like I was explaining to one of my viewers, I think it is a well-rounded heavy tank, but it plays a lot more like the Tiger 1 than I gave it credit for, and so I've been getting myself into some tricky situations with it, trying to utilize the frontal armor in a really aggressive way which um prevented me from actually protecting my vehicle so what i mean by that is i would push into situations using this incredible frontal armor at tier 7 almost impenetrable <laughs> by other tier 7 and tier 6 vehicles to push into situations and use my quick firing 88 millimeter but it is the same 88 as the first one on the tiger i believe I think it's the first 88. Let me do, 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 do KWK 43. I just have to double check that. My mistake. Yeah, the KWK 43. Okay, so this I'm sorry, I meant the second gun on the Tiger one. I couldn't remember. So it's this gun. It's an amazingly good gun. Um, good for long range precise not rapid fire but you are shooting at about nine rounds a minute so that's pretty fast for a heavy tank and it's incredibly accurate I love it the only thing that differs in my opinion with the King Tiger and maybe it's well it's not the crew I don't know what it is but maybe it's because it was balanced a certain way I'm finding mine is not as effective as the KWK-43 on the Tiger 1 in terms of just consistent penetration and consistent accuracy. And what I mean by that is I try to brawl with this vehicle where I would never brawl with my Tiger 1 because of the armor. And that's proven to be sort of a mistake. I've seen a lot of people successfully brawl with this tank and it can do it. You just gotta mind your gun and be careful of your surroundings because it is easily flanked. So, today I'm going to play a couple of games in it. I'm going to try to play it like I play my Tiger 1 and see how effective it can become. And that's just hanging back in about the mid ranges and sniping at opponents instead of just going head to head. Even though this thing does have enough armor to do it, it does not have enough mobility and the turret traverse is not fast enough to deal with opponents flanking you at those close ranges. And it's gun depending on how you hit it if you're not aiming you're just kind of firing at somebody who's in your face will probably bounce a lot of rounds but other than that quick little snippet there which I apologize if I was boring to anybody let's get into some gameplay and now I'm gonna be recording these live so I'll be reacting to the games as I talk to you guys sometimes I'll just record the games and then record over it with my voice I'm gonna do it this way now just to get the base impressions out there on the vehicle. Let me know in the comment section below if you don't like that method or if it seems kind of disjointed and takes longer than if I had just done it separately. I always love the feedback. I love any tips you guys can give me and I really want to make these videos for you guys and whatever you want to see more of or whatever makes the viewing experience better for you, please let me know in the comment section below. I love engaging with you. I love talking with you guys. And it just helps me become a better YouTuber and helps me make these videos better to watch. So if you don't like this method, please let me know and I will change it. Anyway, let's get stuck into some gameplay. Alright, we are in Malinovka and we're not top tier, but it's a pretty good spread. And so what I'm going to try and do is just pretty much go through the basic heavy tank kind of stuff for Malinovka, which is of course going up to about the B or A lines and just hanging out at about A7, A8 and just trying to use my gun depression 
here like this to kind of hold down and get opponents over that hill. Now as you can see, it is, just like I pointed out with the stats, slower than the Tiger 1 simply because it is a much heavier vehicle. But I personally don't think that it, in, you know, it's, um, okay, what am I trying to say? Oh shit, we're getting spotted. I don't think it impedes mobility all that much. Like, we're keeping up with some of the Russian heavies. The Tiger 1 over there is not much further ahead than us. Wait, is that the Tiger 1? The 113. I can't tell. But, it's not bad. The mobility is not bad. I don't hate it. It's the camo factor on this tank, which is not what I went over because I did not believe concealment was an important stat for the King Tiger or the Tiger 2 in general, just because it's so huge. But playing against it in other matches, or even playing with it, I realized that this thing's camo factor is quite good for a heavy tank, even MOBA, even when it's on the move. I mean, I'd have to check those stats again, so I apologize, I don't actually have them ready right now, but it's incredibly stealthy compared to its Soviet counterparts. And... Oh yeah, okay, that's the 131. And what I mean by that is you're obviously going to spot it. It's not overpowered in terms of just having the same kind of camo factor as a medium tank or a light tank. But if it's stationary and firing, say around your second line here, so if my tank's right here and I'm shooting at it, as long as that tiger or that king tiger, see, sorry, stops moving, I won't be able to spot it unless it's way out in the open. That means even like this, I won't get spotted from that hill before, say, the IS-2 does. He will get spotted before me every time, which is nice. I don't know why the camo factor set up this way for, that ve for this vehicle, but I mean, I appreciate the extra help. It does make it hard to play against. I've seen some people complaining about it, that it's too stealthy for a heavy. They're probably right, but for me, especially since this review is about the vehicle itself and how much I like it, I think it's a good thing, but just watch out for that. Watch out if you engage these vehicles at Tier 7, and be prepared to not really see them all that much. Oh wow, whiffed that shot. Yeah, see the aim time is a little bit longer than the Tiger 1, and I know that I have put... A ton a ton of hours into my tiger one all right easy peasy penetration has good pen like i said great pen only did about 220 damage actually 222 damage that's awesome triple twos um so yeah not high alpha just like the tiger one i think that this tank has been balanced appropriately and really in a great way uh, for tier 7 because it is balanced to be almost identical to the Tiger 1 just with more armor and better camo factor Oop, I made a mistake. I apologize The lower plate is just like every tank but really thin but look at that Can't pen the Canarvans turret but Bounced his shot Jackson, which it looks like that's where the Emil is going. I can't hit the Canavran from here, and we have no kills, and we just got flanked. Oh my goodness. Alright, so I kind of tunnel visioned on the hill here. Yeah, so you missed the shot on the move. You'll probably miss half the shots you make on the move in this vehicle. And you'll see, even with the loader gone, the reload's pretty decent. This is about as fast as a Soviet heavy reloads, but that is it for us. I That was my fault. 
I should have been paying more attention to what was happening along the G line, but it looks like we folded pretty quickly, so no kills this game for our team. That is, I haven't seen a 15 nothing loss in a long time. What a terrible game. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. That's a fucking omen. <laughs> I do not know why this game was so bad. Um, the IS-2, going with the IS-1, to where there were possible tanks trying to lock down the hill instead of being overly cautious, and not paying attention to what was happening on those that G-line. So, yeah, not a great game. Team score, yeah, only 400 damage. Uh, got third for experience, though. That sucked. I'm sorry about that game. Because I know that can't be fun to watch. Or maybe it is for you. Maybe you just like to see me and my team get completely decimated. Which, if you do, good news. I'm not that great at playing this game. So you'll see that a lot. However, that does that game did highlight some great points about it. That once it's hold down with that negative 8 degrees of gun depression, it is a very formidable enemy. Where even some tier 8s will be bouncing off of your frontal plate here and off your turret here. So it is incredibly armored. I wanna, let's play another game, hopefully I'll get better results and I'll do more damage. I can show you just how quickly this tank can react to situations and how quickly it can fire. Alright, we are on Live Oaks, that wonderful American map. And we are again in the same matchup. Not quite top tier, but also not bottom tier. Just where I'd like to be in this vehicle. And... Actually, that's a good point I want to touch on. That is exactly where you want to be in this vehicle. Top tier is great, bottom tier is obviously really bad, but I feel like, just like maybe the Tiger 1, that's going to be pretty much everything I say for this review, is just like the Tiger 1, this tank excels when it's in the middle. Alright, let's see if I can hit this. Nice. And that is that really nice Tiger 1 accuracy there. And that vehicle's going to be, yeah, out of sight. Keep moving. Nice shot. It's good for sniping. The 8.1 second reload time is really quick for a heavy tank. And it's just, it feels good. It feels good here because it can defend itself against tier rates and it can also penetrate tier rates. It's not completely useless. And of course against tier 6s, it's a god. But, what I, like I was saying about the flanking thing, tier 6s can take this thing out pretty easily as long as they catch the size and they do it more... If they do it together, I should say. Like if it's just... Wow, it looks like my team's already floundering out in the field there. Yeah, we lost some light tanks and a tank destroyer. Nah, that's not good. I'm gonna try to move up with this OI. I really don't want to deal with that ISM. That is one of the tanks that seems to not penetrate frontal. I mean, that's not saying much because I think it's incredibly thick. <laughs> See, there's where that aim time. I know I said it's a little bit longer than the Tiger one, but it is not a slouch by any means. You can just snap onto a target and return fire really quickly. It's a good vehicle. It's um, it's just an up-armored Tiger one. I believe I said that in the first video, and I know I've said that multiple times in this one. But it's an up-armored Tiger one. So if you play it like a Tiger one. You'll be successful with it. You'll have a good time. Keep that lower plate protected. The ice scrape where you can. And you'll be alright. It's got pretty decent mobility. It's got decent gun handling. Well, actually, it's got great gun handling in my opinion. I'm very used to the Tiger 1's KW4, KWK-43. I think it's an amazing gun. Long time fan of that, and long time fan of the Tiger 1, so this vehicle for me was a must have. And it was free, sort of. What? See, that's what I was talking about before with the, um, with this body gun. That should have gone right through it, but I just jerked it a little bit. Damn it, god damn it, fucking damn it. I really hate that shit. There is no reason for me to do that. That was a misplay on my part. 
I just got upset because for some reason it didn't it didn't penetrate when it should have. That's something that will happen a lot in this tank, which is what I was trying to warn you. At close ranges, the margin for error is super, super small. It will miss targets like crazy. It is not good at being precise. But it is a good sniper. Oh Jesus, here he comes. Also another thing we're looking at right now is my engine is taken out and my track. Every time you get hit in the track in this vehicle, it will also take out your engine, so be prepared for that. Any shot into the lower plate, engine's taken out. Any shot to the side of your vehicle, engine will be taken out. It's really annoying, but the good news is, is that, at least for me so far, I had no engine fires. And also no direct engine hits, so... There is a plus side, the tracks do really buffer that, but it doesn't help with mobility. A lot of misplays on my part, but again, the whole town was being held down by just me and the OI. So again, this is another example of how a team really makes the difference. You have a bunch of our heavies, oh my god, right here, either on cap or, there we go. Right here, heavies that should have been supporting the town are just sitting on this hill for no reason. And um, ultimately, that's how we lost town. But, thank God for the team moving up the train tracks there, and we secured a win. But yeah, I, you really got to coordinate with your team. It's another mistake I made this game. Didn't talk to the team. But we'll look at some post-game stats and hopefully play another game. We're just going to do the three games. If you guys want to see me do more games per video, again, let me know. I'm really new to this whole thing, so... Actually, you know what? I'm going to wait and see if we cap out or if we kill them first. No, we cap out. Wow! What? I guess not. And man, this is a goofy team. But at least they did their job. You know, I can't tell Never hurts to make it faster. Alright, so I guess our E25 is dealing with some kind of psychological warfare. Trying to juke the other team if they're thinking that they've heard weren't gonna gun him down, I don't know. But yeah, so that's a win. Um, another game where my vehicle just got destroyed and did not do a lot of damage, only 756. So I apologize for that. I'm gonna do a third game and hopefully redeem myself. The feedback. Let me know if this video is too long, if you enjoy seeing three games, if you want to plus. Please let me know in the comment section below. Pulls in all rate credits, 23,000 for a win, not bad. Not great. That's because I really didn't do a whole lot. You get to keep 13 of them, so not really a great game in this vehicle, but it is exactly what I showed you. If you don't protect this lower plate, you will regret it. And once you get flanked, that's it. Game over in this vehicle. But let's get into another game, final game, and then I'll give you my final opinions on the vehicle. Hey guys, sorry about that. Not being a third game, but I decided not to play one because I've done about six more. None where this tank survives. Very few where we win. And I think I put together what my I finally think. And the reason I'm rushing is because I'm trying to cook breakfast <laughs> right now and do this. But while it performs almost identical to the Tiger 1 with just extra armor, I rechecked the stats because I wanted to know why it was so much worse in performance than the Tiger 1. And I think I figured it out. And it's all to do with the gun. Even though they don't give you turret traverse speed anymore. They only give you gun traverse, which is fine. And it sounds like, oh, you know, there's that's obviously turret traverse. It's the same thing. It's really not. But the gun traverse is better than the Tiger 1. However, if you look at the firepower... The guns are identical, but the rate of fire is so much faster on the Tiger 1. Even the 200 extra hit points really helps out. And it has a better dispersion, so the average DPM is at 2200 
whereas the King Tiger is at 1700. And the reason I decided not to try and continue to make a third game is because in the last game that I played with this vehicle, I had encountered another King Tiger C, and we were talking about it, and just at how low the DPM really was, and I had forgotten that it's 1700. And so I think that despite it being well balanced for tier 7, it'll never be as good as a Tiger 1, which is kind of the point. And so it's a decent tank, it's okay. Um, if I had to choose the Tiger 1 over this, obviously I'd choose the Tiger 1. If you miss out on this vehicle because you didn't link Twitch Prime or you wanted this exclusive video vehicle, trust me, you're not missing out on anything. My final verdict is it's an interesting novelty, good collectible, poor vehicle in terms of performance. It's going to perform pretty low for what it is as a tier 7 heavy tank. I'd probably rate it about a 4 out of 10. But as far as a crew trainer goes, as far as a unique piece and something that's just different, I think it's a good tank. I still enjoy this vehicle. I still like it. I've just really lowered my expectations after this review. Uh, and probably should have played more games in it before this review, but I think I only have a total of like seven games. And most of those are today. So... I'm... That's my final thoughts. I mean, it's an okay tank. If you have it, you can definitely make it work. You just have to get around how to kind of increase your DPM or how the poor gun handling is in terms of DPM because otherwise the gun is very good, which is what I showed in the first two games today. Uh, it's got a great gun. It just comes down to the tank. Just its stats, like on a just a purely statistical level, it will just always perform lower than every other heavy tank at its tier. There's nothing you can do about that, but if you enjoy the tank, if you enjoy history like I do, and you enjoy collecting vehicles like I do, then it's not a total loss. It's a very nice piece to have in your collection. I think it looks great. It feels alright. It'll make premium credit. It'll be good for doing crew training. So it's not a total loss, but at the end of the day, it's not that great of a vehicle. It's not as good as I was hoping. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Please give me any suggestions you have for better reviews in the future. Sorry this is so erratic. Please let me know if you liked the format, if you hated it, what you would do differently. I really enjoy hearing back from you. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified for the reviews I'll be doing on the AMX 1357, the Stritzvang S1, the Hydro, etc. I love the support. It's great. I really appreciate all the people that have already subscribed to the channel, and I thank you guys so much. And as always, thank you for watching. Sincerely thank you, and I will see you next time.